Hi, I'm Mark Davidson. I'm the manager of marketing and technical materials for Canfield USA. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee at Music City Center. And we're talking to Adam Wiggins, the branch manager of Canfield in Nashville, and Terry McConnell, the director of engineering for Music City Center. Now about three years ago, the filter contract, the air filter contract for Music City was coming to a close. And Terry felt like he needed to look around to see what other options were available and he ran into Adam Wiggins. So Terry, tell us a little bit about how that whole process started. Well, Mark, we opened the Music City Center in May of 2013. And, and as we got and uh, our business models continued to pick up, we were looking at uh, one thing for, first and foremost, which was uh, a labor, labor. We've, we're two and a half million square feet here. And we wanted to become consistent with our uh, preventive maintenance and our filter business. And at that point in time, I worked with pro procurement. We put, put together an RFP and basically just put it on the street. Okay. At that time, I met uh, Adam as, and, and, as the interest started come in, to come in and, and uh, I started to learn more about the filter system. I'm not in the filter business. I wanted to partner with people or, or a, a, a network of people that are experts in the filter systems and that's kind of how it all started. And then so Adam was able to provide that network, in fact a global network it, with, right. with exactly. uh, the information that you needed to kind of have a better idea of what possibilities existed for your facility. That's Is that right. right. So Adam, from your side, uh, when that process started and the questions started coming in, then what did you do? What information did you provide? Well, you know, like Terry said, that was a RFP out and we participated in that RFP as well as added some different caveats of the Camphill option there okay. um, to the Music City Center mm -hmm. to help them with their goals, um, which were to, you know, help with sustainability as well as getting higher indoor air quality. Right. Um, Energy consumption. Energy consumption. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you this then. Um, the, since it was an RFQ, the, uh, typically that, that kind of is focused on the uh, individual piece price. And very often uh, it's, a, it's a situation where the, regardless of what they start off with, the end user ends up starting to look down at that piece price and they base their decisions on that. But I got a feeling you didn't do that. You took a more comprehensive approach. Is that fair to well, say? We, we, we did do that. I mean, we wanted to, uh, in this process, to, 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 to have a commitment with a partner. A long go this, this is a long goal for us. Right. And, and of course, this, this all happened pre-COVID where I'm interested in air quality. It's not my business on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but it's Adams. Right. And so, as we came more into the pandemic, it really proved valuable. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit then. So nobody expected this pandemic to come along, but it did. And it, it certainly did. impacted your business, it I did. would assume. So uh, you probably had questions from some of your customers and potential guests asking about the, the safety and the risk, risk mitigation strategies that yes, you took. And you probably asked Adam those questions, right? I did, I did. And, and that was the part that uh, really brought uh, a sense of comfort or eased our uh, customers, potential customers, clients, as we could be part of the, 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 the global support, support staff, staff yeah, that, that could give me the information I needed as far as, you know, MERV 13, uh, uh, what what we could route to those customers and clients that were looking or possibly coming, and and that was just that that was a huge benefit to me. Not uh, you know for me to have to answer questions or well when does the last time you changed your filters? What's the frequency of this and that? I had it all readily available through Adam. Okay, and you could provide those to your yes. customers and potential mm -hmm. customers. So Adam, the data that you provided to Terry. Um, it's not just numeric data necessarily, but it's also high-tech data. It is. About the performance of a filter, the, the quality of an air, uh, of the uh, volume of air after it goes through filters and things like that. So where did you get that data? And, and specifically, maybe even from a more technical point of view, what, what did you deliver? What did you show? Well, I think at the very beginning, I had to look at what was the Music City Center's goals on their filtration program. Mm -hmm. And then we started building what that filtration program looked like uh, to see if it would meet and satisfy all of those, those goals that, you know, you laid out, mm -hmm. um, which would include reduce, reduction of, of labor uh, forces, um, improving indoor air quality. Let me back up one and ask you this then, reduction of labor. 
So how does that, from a technical, I mean, what, what's the actual infrastructure of that? How do you reduce labor based strictly on an air filter? Well, I think with a facility as large as the Music City Center, two and a half million square feet under roof, um, you know, that's a lot, of, a lot of ground to cover as far as changing air filters and the frequency of doing that. Uh, logistically, being a facility of this size, there's a lot of moving parts to it. You know, scheduling around the events, um, having everything lined up as far as safety goes in and out of the facility, the logistics of dropping off the deliveries, deliveries, deliveries. Um, okay. as well as disposal of the uh, filters that were changed. So there was a lot of moving parts to that um, specifically, but we coordinated about that and, and really that's how we um, kind of tailored their filtration program around that. Now, as far as the extended life or saving on the labor, what you touched about at the time, uh, the filter changes were much more um, frequent yeah. Um, yeah. as well as uh, the types of filters that were being used were a lot, uh, took up a lot more uh, footprint mm -hmm. as far as that storage goes, and storage. And, and so like um, yeah. we looked at the configurations of filters because you know we have many different configurations of filters in our industry, um, but we still wanted to hit that MERV 13A efficiency rating for particle capture. And so we looked at that as well, and, and the high flow ES bag filter product really played into uh, a key, key uh, component of becoming partners in this um, by reducing the amount of changes that had to be done uh, on a regular basis, but yet and still maintain the indoor air quality and that MERV 13 level efficiency. Sort of like having your cake and eating it too. That's correct. So let me ask you this, and you had said this, the filters last longer and they provide a higher indoor air quality. Correct. So when you say longer, and maybe Terry, you can kind of go back on your history previous to involving Adam, how many air change, or maybe you would have to just generalize, but how many filter changes a year did you have to go through? Well, we, a significant amount of filters, uh, we, over the course of the year, yes, we would go through, but I mean, it all was, is determined too on run time and, and then, then uh, availability to the space uh, you know, and the client in and out. So, uh, but it was, uh, it was it was very significant in the amount of time that we did and just the logistics and uh, as adam mentioned uh, you know, at the old days the delivery truck would come in the 18 wheeler we're talking about big deliveries of yeah filters. that's can significantly yeah, that's, uh, interrupt yeah. all of the and things then, going and then it's to to get those filters and get those distributed through the uh, mechanical rooms and where they're needed right. so uh, that that was that the, the, the engineering department was relieved yeah, to okay. get out of the filter business and, and get cam filling. That, that's a good way to put it. You don't need to be in the filter business. You need right. to be in the business of operating your facility Taking to the benefit of, of your, yeah. to your clients because that's what they expect and that's what you, you've become right. known for. Providing that e economic yes. benefit to the city of Nashville. And that's, that's our business. That's yes. what we do. Right, and you're right. Adam's in the filter business, you're not. Yes, so, right. And I think drilling down to that, I think we cut out in a three-year period about 11 filter changes. Um, so 11, and how many filters, again, you might have to grab a number out of thin air, but roughly how many filters are there, how many filter openings in this gigantic facility? There's probably um, over a thousand filter a thousand openings. openings. So, I would say so. So if you extended, if, so if you saved uh, 11 filter change outs, is it fair to say you could just do some quick back of the napkin math and say you went from 11,000 filters right down well, to a thousand is that yeah, fair I mean, to say or is that too simplistic to our partnership there was a two-stage filtration system uh, a two stage yes. so we can filter final filters. Filters. so we can actually double that number mark so you're probably looking at you know close to let's say round numbers twenty two thousand filters okay, so is you, that right you, you went from is my uh, math right I don't know. I, I, maybe i missed out on this part so you went from a two-stage filtration system down to a single stage bag filter, mm -hmm. got rid of this stage. Correct. So you lessen that number of filters. Which is the amount less filters go into the landfill. And you then you would have also lowered the overall system pressure drop, I assume. Correct. Right. Correct. So which directly relates to energy savings, mm -hmm. right? Significant energy. Significant energy savings. Carbon footprint, everything that's associated with that. Correct. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I can certainly see why this has been a valuable partnership. It has. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, Adam was able to provide the, the quality and the technical backup that you needed to ease your customers' concerns. Because at the end of the day, that's the bottom line. That's it. You're in the that's business it. of bringing clients in, and certainly in this time of COVID that we're going through, they needed some comfort level, and you were able to. And, I, and you were able to provide that, Adam and his team.